Greetings, and welcome to my living room. Today we're going to build something that solves three problems that I'm having with this living room. First problem, when I'm sitting on the couch, there aren't enough outlets for me to plug in all the devices that I have. Right now I just have an extension cord draped over the back of the couch. That's not ideal. Problem number two, there's not enough table space to set up a laptop if I want to stream films on the big screen, or to hook up my switch. Look at my switch. It's literally sitting on the back of the couch leaning up against the wall. Again, not ideal. And problem number three, the kitties need a new tunnel once in a while. So today, I'm going to design a long skinny sofa table that will sit behind the couch and give me some much needed table space. It'll also have some built-in outlets on top so I can plug in all my devices. The underside, however, and I've gotten closer to the camera now because this is important, the underside of the table is going to be a kitty tunnel jungle, literally. Hey, how excited are you guys? Are you so excited? To build this crazy contraption, I'll need some table legs. I could build them myself, or I could steal them from an existing IKEA table that I'm not using anymore. I'll reuse the same IKEA screws. I'm also going to need a paintbrush to paint the table black, followed by a coat of clear finish. Next is a small piece of quarter inch particle board, a screwdriver, tape measure, a drill, and a 10 foot piece of one inch wood for the tabletop. Here it comes. Yep, still coming. Still a coming. Now links for all of these supplies are listed in the description if you care to purchase them for yourself. Simply scroll down and click the links. The first thing I need to do is cut the wood down to 8 feet 8 inches to match the length of the couch. Alright, I'm down here at one end of our long skinny sofa table. So now I want to figure out how to attach the table legs. You can't quite put them right at the corners like you would with a normal table because our cats are too fat to slide in between here. So what we're going to have to do is basically attach the legs like this. Just kind of put them askew a little bit so that the cats can meander their way through this. And I'll do the same at the other end. Keep in mind that I'm using the original IKEA screws here. And these screws are actually a little too long to go through this and the wood. They're going to poke out the top if I just screw straight into this. So I'm going to take a piece of leftover quarter inch particle board, cut it into squares, and I'll put this right here, and then the table leg can go on top of that. And then when I put the screw in, it won't go all the way through and poke out the other end. Now obviously another option is to just use shorter screws, but I want to reuse these old IKEA screws that were already in here, because there's already the perfect number of them, and I don't have to buy anything new. I'm cutting these with a coping saw because it just seemed like the circular saw would have been overkill. But I'm still pretty fast with a coping saw, so there's really no difference. Then I'll measure out where my table legs need to be attached. And drill some pilot holes for the screws, making sure not to drill all the way through the tabletop. I'll apply two coats of black paint, letting them dry overnight before applying a coat of clear glaze, which will protect the paint and give the tabletop a bit of a nice shiny finish. All right, time to rearrange the living room and see if this table stands up the way I think it should. That's pretty good. Well, that seems to be working out, so time to move on to phase two. So as you can see, there are a number of wires and cables that are already back here and run that we need to maintain, but we don't necessarily want kitties chewing them up or racing across them. So I've got a solution for that too. Looks like we've got some interest in the space. Don't get used to a kitten, it's gonna change quite a bit. Hiccup. Good grief, look at this mess. We have a number of things plugged in back here that we have to maintain in the new setup. We have to create a few new outlets on the table top that we can use whenever we want and make it kitty proof. For this phase, we'll need a couple of recessed power strip sockets for the tabletop. And this product I discovered called a sleek socket, which runs power from the wall outlet while doing away with the messy plugs sticking out from the wall. It'll also help prevent the kitties from chewing or accidentally unplugging something. Another item I would recommend having is this outlet circuit tester. This will let you know whether or not your power outlets are wired correctly and safely. And finally, I got some childproof outlet covers for the table outlets. Again, links to all these items are listed in the description. After measuring the length and width of the outlet sockets, I'll need to decide where I want the table outlets to live and cut out rectangular holes of the same dimensions. Mm 
And I'll just touch up those raggedy ends with a sharpie. Who cares? Don't tell anyone. A little snug, but it'll stay in there just fine. Could put a screw in on each of these to hold it in, but honestly, I don't think I need them. I'll drop in the outlet covers, and I'll tidy up the cables beneath the table. You'll notice I'm also using some conduit strips to help attach and conceal the wiring. These are great. I'll link to these in the description as well. They stick onto any surface and just keep your ugly wires out of sight. Lying on the floor, literally behind the couch. And this is all supposed to be a surprise. That's why I haven't pushed the couch out all the way. Anyway, I'm down here trying to dress all these cables in such a way that they'll be somewhat kitty proof. And the re oh, geez. This was going to be a surprise. No, it was going to be a surprise. That's why I didn't pull the couch out all the way. Twist ties are your friend. Get it twisted. There we go. Now, use these little hooks with nails to hold these to the wood. That's actually pretty good right there with just the three of these holding it. Right in the middle of this, I'm gonna put a grommet to pass cables through, but for right now, they can just go up through the crack between the table and the couch. Now for the top secret, phase three involves these fake plants. <coughs> Bless you. Now that the wiring is secure, I'm decorating the underside of the table with a handful of fake leaves and branches that the kitties can hide in and chase each other through. These branches will also further obscure the wires as well as the power outlet, and I'm attaching them with tape and or nails, whatever makes the most sense. All right, time to see if the sofa table kitty tunnel jungle passes feline approval. They're jet, clearly very curious. He's wondering, when do I get to see what you're doing back there? Somebody found the new table. What's going on up there? He's not walking on it. He's walking next to it. You investigating? Kitten, is that you? Oh, I see him. Mm-hmm, here he comes. Uh-huh. Kitten, come here. Here he comes. He made it. Go on in there, JT, you're safe. The initial response to the tunnel was a resounding, uh, what are we supposed to do with this? Well, it was clear it was gonna take some time for the kitties to get used to it. So I decided to set up my infrared camera overnight to see if they behaved any differently towards it. Little Jet was the first to begin an investigation. He stared at it for a while and finally decided to walk through. But then something startled him and he backed out and ran away. At around 11.15, he opted for a cat nap on the couch until Ollie showed up at one in the morning. He wandered in and stopped about halfway through. This ultimately made Little Jet very nervous. So he left. At 1.30, Little Jet began his investigation of the tabletop, sniffing out the entire length of it. Ollie followed suit a couple hours later, followed by the usual 5 a.m. chase scene. So yeah, at first, I don't think they really knew what to make of it, and if I'm being honest, neither did I. But as the next few days passed, it became one of their favorite places to hang out. You gonna go back in the tunnel? There he goes. Oh, oh he disappeared in the tunnel. You just is at your new favorite spot. Oh, hello. So was it a success? You decide and let me know in the comments. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't clicked that already. It really helps out the channel. And we'll see you on the next ridiculous build, whatever it may be.